This is a short supporting video that talks about how lipids differ one from the other and where we find these different lipids in our foods. So first of all, the classification. So we know lipids is a class of essential nutrients, and this is the one that are substances do, that do not dissolve into water. So any substance that does not dissolve into water would be considered a lipid. Now when we think about them, frequently people think about fats. And fats, which are typically found in the molecule called triglycerides, are definitely lipids. And they make up about 90 to 95 percent of all lipids. But they're not the only lipids. We have other substances such as phospholipids and sterols, which the most common one when we think about sterols is cholesterol. Um, but I want to focus here on the triglycerides and fats because that makes a big difference on uh, structures of food. And later on, uh, we'll talk about how they impact uh, health. So first of all, with triglycerides, which is how we package fats, we can see the molecule here is made up of a backbone, what we call a three-carbon backbone molecule. That molecule is called glycerol. And then attached to those, at each one of those carbons, we have a fatty acid. So this is a fatty acid. And here's our fatty acid number one, fatty acid number two, and fatty acid number three. So we have tri, three, glycerol, which coming from that root uh, backbone of glycerol, triglycerides. What is important to note, though, is that these fatty acids, even though they look the same here, can be different. Right? So fatty acids can be different, and they can cause a big difference both in the structure of food and in our health. So that's what I want to talk about next here is an inch look at that is how we classify and how fatty acids differ. So fatty acids, how they differ one from the other. So here we I have on the screen many different types of fatty acids and I want to just point out how they differ one from the other. One way that a fatty acid will differ one from the other is the length of the carbon chain. The carbon chain just represents you know, the number of carbons here in that chain of that molecule. They will generally go from two carbons to up to about 24 carbons in length. On average, they average 18 carbons, and that's what this, this first one is. This is an 18 carbons, but here's another one that's 12 carbons, so they can vary in length. Um, and most common one is longer, so that would be uh, what we'd see in most of our foods, but not totally. Another way, though, that we, and gets to be more dis discussed about is how we, differ, um, how we differentiate fatty acids by their degree of saturation. Degree of saturation. And what I mean by saturation, we are saturated with hydrogen. Hydrogen or not. Either it is saturated or not. Here stearic acid is a saturated fat, fatty acid. Right? It has no double bonds, and that's what it means. When you have no double bonds, you have no space to add any hydrogen, so it is saturated fat. But we can also have unsaturated fats. And all that means unsaturated fatty acids is that it, they have double bonds. So saturated versus unsaturated is the first kind of classification here, but we're going to classify them further. So we can have unsaturated, but within unsaturated you can have monounsaturated, which just means one. Sorry saturated. So this just means one. It has one double bond. And then you can have polyunsaturated. And that would mean it has more than one, so many, um, or and actually it tips it has from about two to four double bonds. I'll abbreviate that. And so we can here see one, two. We can further distinguish though between different types of polyunsaturated. We so we can keep going down our, our our visualization here of how we differ in degrees of saturation and how they're unsaturated. So we have saturated, unsaturated, and with unsaturated you can have mono or polyunsaturated, and then with under polyunsaturated you can have omega-6 and omega-3. 
and we can see where they get their name because when we are counting um, carbons, this is called the omega end. Is this the end of the molecule? And then we just count back one, two, three, four, five, six. And so that's our six. The first double bond is on the six carbon. In omega three, we count back one, two, three. It's that third carbon that is the first double bond. These get to be important in physiological impacts, but right now we're just kind of describing how different fatty acids differ from one the other, and we can see saturated, unsaturated, and then within unsaturated there's mono and poly, and then with poly there is omega-6 and omega-3. If we look at food sources, we can start to see some patterns of what is happening. So this is a, um, a graph that shows you the amount of each one of these um, types of uh, uh, fatty acids, how you would find them in foods. Notice here that they are a mixture of these fatty, ac fatty acids in foods. There is not an all or nothing. So we don't have all saturated fat or no saturated fat, but we always have a mixture. We can see some patterns though, because those things that are kind of rich in saturated fat, so kind of look at these ones at the top that are quite rich in saturated fat, they tend to be animal foods, and they tend to be solid at room temperature. And it has to do with that saturated fat being a straight chain that can pack them in, so it's easier to, to see that. Uh, now if we, I'm going to pick a different color here and look at another one. We can also now see that we have, um, different color here, that we have these that are more unsaturated. We're just going to look at all the unsaturated fats here. And the pattern here is that they are plants and they are liquid at room temperature. Now that's just in general with respect to having unsaturated fat. If we're going to try and dif differentiate between the monounsaturated and the general polyunsaturated, there's no easy way to do that. You just need to memorize it. So corn oil is very rich in polyunsaturated fatty acids, and canola oil and olive oil are very rich in monounsaturated fatty acids. In a food like avocado, if we pulled out the fat, it would be liquid at room temperature, so we can't just look at the food, and that's there. And same with salmon. Now what is sort of interesting about the ones here on the bottom is that they are also very rich in this um, omega-3 fatty acid. So if we look at these omega-3 fatty acids, here are some foods that are rich in that. So they're unsaturated, but specific type is going to be omega-3 fatty acids. So there's an uh, importance with that. One last one I'll point out here is going to be that um, coconut oil. So what it's, it's quite different in that we have a plant, this plant, and it's an oil, but it's rich and saturated. So that seems like it's going against our kind of rule of, of solid and animal being rich in saturated fat and plants uh, and liquid being rich and unsaturated. And here we have a plant and that's oil and it's saturated. But what we know is that the fatty acids are short chain. So they have fewer carbons, which makes it kind of unique. So coconut oil is kind of unique in our, our pattern. So we're going to summarize this up, and we have lipids. We've got the different types. We've got the triglycerides, phospho, and sterols. But we've focused in on the fats and those triglycerides, and we've looked at how fatty acids differ one from the other. We've looked at their link. We've looked at their degree of saturation, saturated, unsaturated. And unsaturated, we went to mono and poly. And then poly we went to omega 6 and omega 3. And then saw a summary of how they differ in the foods that we consume.